Welcome. In this video, I will show you how to trace code. Tracing code means pretending you're the computer, reading your program line by line the way the computer will when it runs it, and understanding exactly what the computer is going to do on every single line. That way you can check to make sure that the computer is going to do what you want it to do and that your program will work. Programmers trace code when they want to double check if their programs make sense after they're done writing them. Also, if you run your program and something unexpected happens, like there's an error or the, com the program doesn't do what you think it should, programmers usually go back and trace code as a way of checking as if they're the computer to understand why is that error happening. Finally, programmers trace code to understand how someone else's code works or what someone else's code is going to do. An important idea when you trace code is looking at what I'm calling the flow of information. You know that your program stores information inside of variables so that it can use that information later. As you trace your code, you want to understand exactly what does every single line do with the information in your variables. Is a line of code reading information from your variables to display it? Is it storing new information inside a variable? This is the kind of thing that we're going to look at when you learn to trace code. Let's do it using this example from class. When we run the code, you know that it starts underneath the main method. This first line of code will create three variables called height, weight, and BMI. Whenever you create variables, remember that they can only hold certain kinds of information. These three variables hold doubles, which are numbers with decimals. The next line of code creates two variables, user input and user response. These hold strings, or text information. When you trace code on your own, I strongly encourage you to get out a piece of paper and actually write down little spots where you can write your variable names and a box next to each one where you can fill in the value. For this simple program, it might seem silly, but as you write more complex programs, it's really easy to get lost or to forget what the values of your variables are, and this is a great way to keep track of them. Okay, the next line of code is the jOptionPane.showMessage dialog command. This opens a window with the message, hi, I'm going to help you find out your BMI. Okay, next line of code. Whenever you see an equal sign, you remember it means take what's on the right and store it inside what's on the left. Okay, what is it that's on the right? Well, we have to evaluate that. JOptionPane.showInputDialog will open a window with the message, how tall are you in meters? The user will type in a number, and it's that number that gets stored from the right to the left inside the user input variable. Something that's confusing is the user might type numbers, but it's saving into a text variable. What's happening is the computer looks at all numbers as symbols. So the number two to the computer is the symbol two. It's just the same as the symbol for A or for W or for anything else. You and I know that it's supposed to represent the number two, but the computer doesn't know that until we tell the computer that's what it's supposed to be. The next line, we're going to tell the computer to convert that symbol into a number, so that way we can actually do a math with it. Again, whenever you see an equal sign, you want to start thinking about what's on the right, so that way you'll know what's getting saved into the variable on the left. Double dot parse double takes text input and converts it into a number, specifically a double, which is a number with decimals. What happens step by step is the computer will read the text inside the user input variable, the double dot parse double command takes that as input and converts it into a number. And finally, that number gets saved into height. The next two lines are very much the same as the previous two lines, so we'll go a little bit faster. Again, in each of these lines, it happens in two steps. This line opens the window. The user types in their number, which gets saved as text information inside user response. Next line, the computer reads the text inside user response double dot parse double converts it into a number, and that number is saved into weight. Next line, looking from right to left, the computer reads the numbers inside weight and height, performs the calculation, and saves the result into BMI. Last line, last line, show message dialog opens a window displaying the message your BMI is, but also needs to read in the number inside BMI to include in the message.